So yesterday we explored setting up the O3 backend using the Docker, but this time we're going to explore that using the SDK. One of the reasons why some people would prefer using uh, the Docker option is in that case, they don't have to set up uh, Myvin, they don't have to set up Java. But for those who are already, for instance, those who are already doing backend development and they have already set up Java and Maven, the SDK becomes another option to, you know, actually for those who already have Java and Maven, the SDK may even be a simpler option than Docker from the experience that I had in Nigeria when different developers were, <clears throat> were setting this up. So it's just a, a, a tiny section for the uh, on the wiki that just shows the option of setting up O3 uh, using the SDK. Um, as you can see here, uh, it has a link for Java. Uh, for now, currently, we require a minimum of Java 8. Uh, we support Java 11.2, and we are currently adding support for Java 17, but not yet released. But as per the current release, you can use Java 8 and 11. Those will, will work pretty well for both the platform and the modules. And then you need to install uh, <coughs> Maven. After you've done that, so the next step would be uh, setting up, uh, actually I would call this installing the SDK. So this is the first command, which will be installing the SDK <clears throat> for the first time. Uh, you don't have to run this every time you're setting up a new server. You only need to run this when you're setting up the SDK for the very first time. So you would go to any of your command line prompt and run this command. Um, and after you've run this, uh, it will do download a number of things. Um, it's been, it's run pretty fast on my machine because I've already run it before, but if you're running it for the very first time, it will take some few minutes trying to download, uh, the artifacts that are needed by the SDK, uh, but of importance when it, when it finishes, uh, it will tell you whether it has succeeded or not. As you can see here, it's a build success. Um, and then it gives you some instructions on now you can start using the SDK, uh, using this, um, the task name, and then it also tells you where the settings file is. This is uh, important. There are times when you're running the SDK and you fail to load some artifacts and then uh, you try to ask for help. Uh, you can go and talk and then you go on Slack and then you ask for help and they're like, you need to put this and that in your Maven settings file. But because the location varies from computer to computer, so even the person who tries to help you, they'll only tell you, locate your settings file and then put this and that. So this is a very useful tool that helps you to figure out where the settings file is on your particular machine. So in this case, as you can see here, my settings file is in this location. So in case you get issues and then somebody points you to your settings file, all you need to do is just remember to run that command again. It, there's no danger running it multiple times. It has no problem at all. Uh, it will remind you about where the, your settings file is. So once you've done that, <clears throat> uh, then the SDK is installed and ready to run. Uh, so when we go back to our documentation, uh, sorry, the link that I opened up. Okay, the next command uh, is setting up a new backend server. Um, you can have as many backend servers as you want, so uh, you're not limited. It's up to how much space you have on your on your file system. So you're free to have as many backend servers as you as you want to set up. Uh, later on, I'll explain why you may need more than one, but for now, just one is enough. You can set up one. If you have issues with it, you can drop it, delete it completely, set up another one, or just abandon it and leave it running and then just set up another one. So let's go ahead and run this other command. This is the second command. So this is the one you'll run all the time. Every time you need to set up a new server, this is the command to run. So when you go to your command line prompt and then you run the MVN OpenMSS DK setup, uh, uh, before I even get to that, uh, let me kill it and share something else. There's the help that you can take advantage of. Uh, that is MVN open numbers SDK, uh, full colon and help. The help command gives you the number of options that the SDK has. There are very many and you do not need all of them, but in case you want to read about any particular option and its details, 
help is very helpful. So it gives you all these and explains them, you know, sub ID, ETC, ETC, there are very many of these. Do not worry about the details of each, just keep it at the back of your mind that anytime you want to get help about a particular SDK command, um, the help command can be very useful. We try to document uh, these commands uh, on the SDK uh, here, main documentation. But as you clearly know, some of those commands are not documented here, or some are not even up to date, uh, unfortunately. But the the other runtime command gives you the ones that are currently present. I can remember, I think uh, there are some new ones that can be added, but sometimes we forget to add them to documentation. So we don't keep it in sync. So the, every time you want to get some help about any command, just run the Maven open or SDK help, and that will give you um, the list of those. So let me run the setup again. That's the one to set up a backend server. So this, when you're running for the first time, it will download a number of artifacts. Uh, it has run pretty fast on my machine because I've, I previously ran it. So it downloaded them in advance uh, because if it hadn't done that, they would have to wait for a while. Uh, but so the next, the same thing will happen to you when you run the first time, it will be slower, but other times it will really run pretty fast unless there's a new release of the SDK which would mean that now it will slow down a little bit while while, while trying to download the newer version. So it, it starts, as you can see here, setting up a new server, specify the server ID, the default. So it prompts you for the name of the server that you would want, and it gives you a default name. As you can see, it, it tries to look through your SDK folder. There's a folder where the server names are all stored. So it goes through those folders and goes on incrementing the names by one. So it starts with server, server one, server two, server three, server four. Uh, as you can see, it's suggesting server 13 because it looked through my folder and found 12 servers up to server 12. So it suggests server 12, 13. Uh, you are free to go with the default or you can supply your own server. My recommendation for first timers is to just go with the default server name. The reason being that sometimes I've seen uh, people posting on talk about errors, which are to do with the server name. I think even this very week, I saw somebody who typed a name. I think it was not a valid name because it uses the server name as the same name for the database. So if I put something like, um, um, say, O3, O3 example, whatever. As you can see here, this is a name that has spaces. So when you're setting up a database that has this name, that these spaces, or even some other characters, whatever you may um, put, you may find that some of these characters are not valid uh, names for the folder name on the file system, or even for the database. So you may get some weird errors that you may not know especially for a newcomer, you may not easily figure out that it's something to do with an invalid character in your name, okay? So to avoid all that uh, for the first time, I would suggest that you just go with the default. Later on, as you become comfortable with the SDK, then you can put your particular names and customize as you see fit. But for the sake of setting it up first time without any issues, just go with the default. And how do we go with the default? You don't have to type it again. You just press enter. So as you can see here, specify server, it gives me a default of server 13. If I want to go with this as the default, I just press enter and do not type anything. So the next prompt asks me for which kind of server I want to set up. Uh, uh, there's the platform, that's the core platform without any modules, or the 2.x di distribution, that's the, the reference application we used to have before O3. Uh, but for now, we are interested in the third option, which is the O3 distribution. So. You can use any of these numbers to specify which option that you've chosen. In this case, we are typing three to indicate that we are interested in O3 distribution. So after you've typed three, it will download uh, uh, a number of artifacts. Uh, it lo it's looking for the versions that are available for you to choose from. So um, it's pretty fast now because I've run it before. But for your time, for your experience when you run it for the first time, don't get uh, surprised if it takes a while that's simply because there's lots of stuff that it's downloading behind the scenes. So as you can see here, <clears throat> uh, it, 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 it lists a few versions for you, but it also gives an option for number six, uh, where you can go for other 
and explicitly write the version that you're interested in. It's rare, but once in a while, you may be interested in a version that is probably one of those uh, old versions that you've uh, that's not part of the defaults that are listed. So that's when you go with option six. But most of the times, the defaults that are listed, uh, it starts with the latest snapshot and then the latest releases. Most of the time, that will be enough. Uh, so for our case here, we are going to start to go with number one, which is the latest bleeding edge of O3. That's exactly what you see running on Dev3. You know, it, it 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 has the latest merges for each and every O3 module. So exactly what you have on Dev3, you can reproduce locally by simply going with option number one. That's the latest snapshot version of the reference app version three. So you type one and then press enter. So then it goes ahead and downloads the artifacts for that. Uh, while running and downloading this, if you make a mistake or if you find that you've uh, selected the wrong option, you know, different from what you wanted, you are always free to stop the SDK by simply pressing Control C. Uh, I think on some machines it could be Control Z and that will kill the setup of the SDK and then run the setup command again. There's no danger running the setup command multiple times. So if it's downloading and you notice, oh, I think I chose the wrong version. It's not, it's not the version that I wanted. You know, it's not whatever. So you can always stop it by control C and then run it again, okay? So this takes a while because it's running uh, the, uh, the front end tooling. Uh, if you can look at the command line, those who are familiar with uh, all three development and the front end tooling, you'll see that it's running uh, this uh, NPM, November is next version. And then um, it, it runs the assemble and build commands. Uh, to set up the uh, O3 um, <clears throat> uh, artifacts, so the files that you actually get and put on into your onto your server. So that takes a while, uh, but we shall get there. And of course, uh, sometimes that command does not succeed, and you bump into errors. So it will display those errors, and it will fail to continue. Uh, and that's the time when you get this error log and share it on talk or even Slack for the devs to look into and figure out what's going on. Uh, we used to have that in the past, but it was things were fixed. So this should run pretty well. Um, so <clears throat> as this runs, uh, because it takes a couple of minutes uh, to run and complete, after this server has uh, is set up and run, uh, the next bit we are going to explore is um, how to deal with the backend API uh, with our custom REST API and the Fire API.